Our next task is to see if we can derive a production possibility frontier for the whole economy, given that we know the production possibilities for each of the individuals in that same economy. So what we will do here is we will take the example we have been working with now uh, of an economy in which we have two individuals, the same two as we have discussed, Amanda and Zoe, and we will take their individual production possibilities and see if we can aggregate them or sum them up to in such a way that we can represent the production possibility frontier of the whole economy in graphic form. So here then is the question we face. Can we represent the production possibilities of the whole economy by aggregating the production capabilities of each individual? We will see, yes, that we can do this. This is going to be called the economy-wide production possibility frontier. And just as we defined the individual production possibility frontier as the combinations of the two goods that an individual could produce by using all of her time, the economy-wide production possibility frontier is defined similarly. It's a set of output combinations that could be produced in the economy when all the available productive resources are in use. So let's get back to our example here. We have Amanda's production possibility frontier and we have Zoe's production possibility frontier. And our objective is to represent the production possibilities of the whole economy. Let's start then by supposing that both Amanda and Zoe allocated all of their time to producing vegetables. If that were so, given that Amanda can produce 18 and Zoe can produce 9, then this point up here, A, is going to be a point on the economy-wide production possibility frontier because it says that we could produce 9 plus 18 is 27 units of the good on the vertical axis while producing a zero amount of the good on the horizontal axis. By the same reasoning, if we devoted all of the economy's resources to producing fish, since Zoe can produce 18 units by allocating all of her labor there, and I beg your pardon, since Zoe can produce 18 units and Amanda can produce 12, the total amount of the two goods we could produce would be 30 units of the good on the horizontal axis and zero units on the vertical axis because we would, produce a, we would be producing zero units of vegetable if all the resources were allocated to producing fish. Now, what happens in between these two extreme points? We have given a good reason for being able to attain the two corner points. And what we're going to propose is that the economy-wide production possibility frontier can be established by mounting one of the production possibility frontiers on top of the other. So we're going to move Zoe's production possibility frontier up here, and we're going to move Amanda's production possibility frontier out there, and we're going to argue that the resulting brown or beige line that we have there represents the economy-wide production possibility frontier. Well, let's start then from point A up on the vertical axis where we are completely specialized in the production of vegetable. We are in an economy here with two sources of production or two individuals who can produce the two goods. And at the moment we are producing all vegetable and we decide that what we want to do is to produce a certain amount of fish and therefore give up uh, the production of a certain amount of vegetable. If we are to produce less vegetable, there's obviously the question of who should be asked to produce the fish instead of the vegetable. Well, it makes sense that if we want to be efficient in the allocation or in the use of our productive resources in the economy, from the point A here, where the economy is producing all vegetable, we should really ask the person who is most efficient at producing fish to be the first person to allocate her labor to the production of that good. Given that Zoe is more productive 
at producing fish. We should ask her to reduce the nine units of vegetable she is producing and for every one unit less of vegetable she produces she will be able to produce two units more of fish because her production possibility frontier has intercepts 9 and 18 or 1 to 2 is the ratio so for every one unit decline in vegetable she should be able to produce two units more of fish. So it would be more productive from the standpoint of the economy as a whole to use Zoe in the production of fish at the point where we, ha where we start with all of our resources to the production of vegetables. Well, if that is the case, as we start from the point A up here and we reduce our production of vegetable, we will clearly go along Zoe's production possibility frontier as long as we want to produce more fish. In fact, we would continue using Zoe to produce fish and have Amanda continue to specialize in the production of vegetable as long as we wanted to produce more fish. But if having pursued this strategy, we have now reached a point where Zoe has expended all of her 36 hours in the production of fish, then she has produced 18 units of fish and we have nine units less of vegetable being produced in the economy. So if we have nine units of vegetable less in the economy, minus nine here, and we have 18 more units of fish, plus 18, it follows that the coordinates that define the production possibility frontier for the economy-wide production possibility frontier, that is, should be 18 and 18. At this point, if we wish to continue to produce more fish and less vegetable, we have to bring into play Amanda. At this point, since Zoe has allocated all of her hours to the production of fish and, and she has no more productive capacity, then we have to use Amanda to produce fish. When Amanda produces fish, she must give up three units of vegetable for every two units of fish that she is going to produce. So when we get more fish from Amanda by going in this direction, we will have to endure a decline of three units of vegetable for every two units of fish in addition that we want to produce for the economy. So if we go from the configuration of 18 and 18 to where we use all of the productive capacity of Amanda and Zoe together, that is to say they each use all of their time in the production of fish, we will be able to produce 30 units of fish and Amanda will reduce her production of vegetables by 18 units and she will increase her production of fish by 12 units. So if we are trying to be efficient in the allocation of labor in this economy and we start from the point such as A or indeed if we start from any point on the economy-wide production possibility frontier if we want to produce more of one of the goods, we should use the individual who is most efficient at producing this good. And that is why we get the shape for the economy-wide production possibility frontier that we have here.